Our first step to solve this question is to draw the current within the circuit. We can draw that current in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, but we can make an accurate prediction as to which direction is the real direction by considering the EMFs of the batteries. Here we have EMF1 and EMF2. We can see from the given information that EMF1 has a value of 2 volts and the other EMF has a value of 3 volts, so clearly EMF2 is larger than EMF1, so it will provide the stronger electromotive force to push charges through the circuit. So if you look at the orientation of these batteries, EMF1 would be pushing current in a clockwise direction, EMF2 would be pushing current in a counterclockwise direction, but as stated, EMF2 is larger, so the counterclockwise direction is going to be the correct direction for the current. So we're going to establish the current traveling in a counterclockwise direction. After figuring out the direction of that current, the next thing to do is to apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. And we can apply that loop rule beginning at any point within the circuit. We will arbitrarily select the point right here. We'll mark it in blue. And what we're going to do is just move in the same direction as the current. So we're going to move in a counterclockwise loop through the circuit. The first circuit element that we would encounter beginning at the blue point would be this battery whose EMF is labeled E2. Now you'll notice that when you go through that battery, you would be moving from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. That would represent a positive change in the EMF. So what we're going to start out by writing is positive EMF2. As we move through the circuit in the counterclockwise direction, we will next encounter the other battery. But this time, because we're moving in a counterclockwise direction, we would be moving from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. That would represent a negative EMF change. So we're going to write minus EMF1. Next, we encounter a resistor. Now, for resistors, the potential change will always equal the current multiplied by the resistance value. So for this resistance, we could say that the potential change is equal to the current times the resistance R1. What we want to decide is whether it's going to be positive or negative. Well, we have the current moving counterclockwise, and we are moving through the circuit in a counterclockwise loop. In other words, we're moving in the same direction as the current. And when you're moving in the same direction as the current, then you will have a negative potential change. So this is going to be a minus I times R1. We then get to the resistor marked uppercase R. Again, we're moving with the current, so it's going to be a negative potential change. And we simply take the current and multiply it by the unknown resistance value, capital R. Finally, the last circuit element we encounter is this element right here, another resistor. So we're going to have minus the current multiplied by R2. And then because we are returning to our blue starting point, we can finally set these potential changes equal to zero. So our job in part A, let's recall, is to solve for capital R. So what we're going to do is rearrange the equation so that it is solved for capital R. Alternatively, you could start plugging in the known values. And in fact, some students find that to be easier. Let's try it that way. So we're going to plug in for E2. We're going to plug in the 3 volts. We're going to omit units for clarity right now as well. Minus E1, which was 2 volts. Minus the current, now be careful here, the current is given in milliamps, so one milliamp requires us to move the decimal three places to the left, so that's 0 .001 amps. So that's what we'll be plugging in for the current. Again, we will omit units in the equation for clarity. Multiplied by R1, which is three ohms. Then we have minus the current, 0 .001, multiplied by the unknown, capital R, minus... We're going to run out of room here, so why don't we take this and move it down. Minus the current, which is 0 0.001, multiplied by R2, which also is 3 ohms, and then we're going to set this equal to 0. Now, it should be pretty easy to solve. We can combine all of these like terms, so 3 minus 2 minus the 0.001 times 3 minus the 0.001 times 3. This gives us... 0.994 minus 0 0.001 capital R equals 0. We could subtract the 0.994 from both sides. And then finally, 
we'll divide both sides by negative 0 0.001, and we will see that capital R is 994. This will come out to the standard unit of ohms. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. We can go back up and check out part B. It wants the rate at which thermal energy appears in R. Well, the rate at which thermal energy appears is another word or phrase for power. So they're really asking us to calculate the power that occurs within resistor labeled capital R. The power of a resistor can be calculated by the current squared times the resistance value. So what we're going to do is take the current of 0 0.001 amps, don't forget to square it, and then multiply that by the resistance value that we just figured out. And when we do this, we get a power of approximately 9.94 times 10 to the minus 4. And then this will come out into the standard unit of power, which is watts. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate that. My Venmo ID is listed, but otherwise, no problem. Thanks again for watching.